The Nazis were building a road across Poland. One night, the Allies bombed the road to smithereens. The emaciated Jews huddled in their bunks as hundreds of tons of TNT exploded all around them. Miraculously, the air raid injured nobody. The road, however, was a different story. It looked more like the surface of the moon, riddled with huge bomb craters. The Nazis were furious. Shouting and screaming, they ordered all the Jews out of the huts. In that freezing Polish winter, they made them run at the double in bare feet down to the road to the biggest crater. You Jews need some exercise, they said. You pitiful specimens. One by one, you'll jump across this bomb crater. If you make it, you can go back to your beds. But if you fall into the crater, you will be machine gunned to death before you can crawl out. I'm sure you'll agree that this should make for an interesting evening's entertainment. The stillness of the night was punctuated by the sound of machine gun fire and the last cries of a holy Jew returning his soul to his creator. In that silent queue of destiny stood a giant of the soul, the Blushev Rebbe Zechet Sadlev And behind him there was a young fellow from the Warsaw Ghetto who'd lost his faith through the torment of the war. The young man said to the Blushev Rebbe, when it's my turn, I'm not going to jump. Let them shoot me where I stand. I, I'm not going to entertain them. I'm not going to perform for them like a dog. Quietly, the Blushev replied to him, my friend, what a precious gift the Creator has given us, the gift of life. However, he's given it to us with a condition, and that condition is we cannot give it back to him one moment earlier than he takes it from us. It was the Blushev Rebbe's turn to jump. He stood at the mouth of the abyss, and summoning what little strength was left in his frail body, he closed his eyes. It seemed to the young man that a smile came over the Blushevah's angelic face, as though he'd recognized an old, long-lost friend. The Blushevah took a few steps back and then leapt into the darkness. He opened his eyes. He was on the other side, and seconds later the young man landed next to him. How did you possibly have the strength to do that, said the young man. You're old, you're weak, you're... Just before I jumped, said the Blushevo, I saw a vision of my Zayda in front of me. In front of him was his Zayda, and his Zayda, and all the holy Jews back through all the ages to Mount Sinai. All those Jews who kept our holy Torah, even when it cost them their lives. I saw my Zayda jumping across the pit, and I stretched out my arms and grabbed onto his coattails, and he pulled me across. The two remained in silence for a few long seconds. And then the Blushiva said, that's how I made it across. But you, how did you do it? Rebbe, I was hanging on to your coattails. We're certainly not the Blushiva Rebbe, but every one of us has someone who's holding on to our coattails, someone who depends on our love, on our help, and us just being there for them. We may be very small, but to someone else, we are their lifeline in their life, and we can't let them down.